What is up, players? It's War Boss Tay back up in this mug. Welcome to my part two, the final video on how to paint Krom the Conqueror for your Warriors of Chaos army. Here he is, all highlighted up, and I'm really happy with how everything came out, including the cloak there. And uh, I actually went back a little bit later and added some more fine uh, edge highlights, which you'll see. Uh, on the edges of all the armor plates. I put a little bit of silver with runefang steel, but um, this is perfect if you want to get a really good um, high quality paint job. So I'm going to teach you how to do that. We're going to use Abaddon Black, runefang steel, lead belcher, steel legion drab, rackharth flesh, Known Oil, Bane Blade Brown, and if you don't want to use that you can also use Karak Stone. There's a lot of colors that are very similar to each other. Brass Scorpion, Brass Scorpion, Corn Red, Troll Slayer Orange, Rust Gray, Dark Reaper, Uh, Death World Forest. I think I also use Castellan Green. Liquid Gold, Rich Gold from Vallejo. Now this is a great, great product. And um, I highly recommend anybody who uses paints with metallics gets one of those, uh, one of the liquid gold colors from Vallejo. You're going to need to use uh, alcohol, isopropyl al alcohol, to clean your brushes after that because they are an enamel paint and you don't want to gunk up your brushes. It's a different way of cleaning them than using water-based acrylics. But um, I'm really happy with the, the, the effect that it gives to like the sword hilt and the armor, or uh, the, uh, the shield. Thumbs up. All right, let's get going. So the first thing um, we are taking up right after part one. So after we've let our watches dry, we're going to come back on with Lead Belcher. And I'm going to be focusing first on the top half of the sword. Seems like the light is shining like right on it there. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry if you can't really see uh, the uh, effect of the paint going on. And then on the bottom half of the sword, I'm going to try to stick mostly to the edge of the sword and leave a little bit of shadow right at the center. So wherever you turn your sword, it's going to create the false illusion of a darker area or a shadow in the center of the sword. I'm also going to be painting the uh, silver bits on the top of the horn It's on the helmet. So I'm I'm trying to get the brush and or the paint to start from the like the base of these horn caps and work my way up towards the top. And um, you can also go like here. I'm showing if you start from the top and go back down. I wouldn't want to do that though if you just get your paint brush, uh, your paint on your brush because then you're going to leave a lot of clumpy paint at the top. So with everything, um, I try to thin my paint with a little bit of water. Usually I use a wet palette. I think for this video I do a lot of my uh, thinning down on the caps of the paint bottles. Just add a little bit of water to your brush and um, that, should, that should do it. Now we're painting the axe head. So again we're sticking to the edges and we're kind of feathering the metallic inwards toward the center. leaving a little bit of shading and uh, darker metallics in a darker iron color, sort of right where the axe head is. Okay, also he's got a silver chaos star pendant right on the front of his chest plate there and a silver belt buckle. So make sure you've got uh, just enough paint there on the tip of your brush. And I'm also highlighting up the chain mail which you can see there in the, the groove where his uh, elbow is and uh, like the tabard hanging down. There's also, don't forget that rim on the right shoulder pad. 
you can't really see the one on the left shoulder pad, which is good because it's uh, one less thing you have to worry about. But that one on the right shoulder pad is pretty prominent. And of course, also there's a chain where the two severed heads are hanging from, so we're going to be painting that as well. And the hilt of the axe, or in the bottom, whatever you call that, the bottom of the the hilt. Now we're painting up the helmet of the Night Panther. I'm sorry for, again, for the focus issues. I'm not looking at the uh, computer screen. I'm trying something different to see how the, the sound works with this uh, voiceover kind of method. And so that means that the camera is to my left on the table. And even though I have the viewfinder uh, facing me where I'm sitting, it's um, it takes a while sometimes to find the point of focus. Okay, Steel Legion Drab is going to be our first highlight color for the uh, hide on the cape. So I'm going at it from this angle here, and um, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it on camera because it's going to just mess with the focus too much but there's also don't forget the pouch hanging off of his hip on the right side which is hidden behind the shield now a lot of people like to paint their shields separately and uh, I think that's you know that's totally fine if you want to do that uh, I've seen people painting their chaos warriors with the shield unattached so that you can get the armor underneath my philosophy is if you're not gonna see it if there's no chance of you seeing it, then uh, you don't really need to worry about it. It's one less thing to have to worry about. Sure, if you turn your model at a very specific angle, then you might be able to see underneath. But I just co covered that up by uh, putting in some wash or um, throwing some black paint in there. Because realistically, no, one, no matter how you hold the model, you're not going to see the exact... Uh, like the top of his glove that's holding the axe behind, that's hidden behind the shield pressed up against his body. Or you're not going to see the piece of armor behind his glove and in front of his, uh, where his forearm is. So completists, completionists can, if you I mean, if you want, by all means, paint, uh, paint everything up to the highest standard you want. Uh, for me though, I kind of see it as what what is the viewer going to look at? And that is that is what I choose to paint. Now, when you're painting the back here, anything organic or that was alive, I like to use small, definite brush strokes and kind of stick to the edge as much as possible, so that you can uh, see where the kind of ripped and frayed edges of the hide are, and um, that will help you when you're trying to differentiate with the the lower shaded colors and the highlight colors. Okay, we're moving on now, and we're going to be using Rackarth Flesh to highlight the skulls that are hanging off the shield. Now, um, Rackarth Flesh is a very heavy and thick color, so that means that if you're using it for highlighting, which is what we're going to be doing, you really want to thin it down and make sure you don't load your brush with paint. That's, a, I think, a pretty common term, loading your brush. That basically means you don't want to put too much brush on your or paint on your on your brush tip pretty much how it sounds <laughs> what did you say lady boss <laughs> too much brush on your paint tip okay so I'm painting it from the top and I'm kind of dragging the paint down and that's to simulate the light hitting the top of the skulls and the way that the skulls are angled it creates more of an interesting effect if you drag the paint down like this instead of starting from like the center or from the bottom and painting up. The tricky thing with highlighting too is you want to leave that depth and that shading in the lower areas, in the recesses, and you're trying to create the illusion of shadows where uh, there, there might not be. So starting from the top and kind of um, working your way down towards the bottom of whatever area you're painting is generally a good way to go. 
he's got some fangs on his necklace and uh, those were kind of tricky for me because they're um they kind of get mixed up into the the pendant the chaos pendant so i'm going to be coming back to that later uh, now with the last of the paint left on my brush i'm kind of feathering up from the bottom of the cuff of the boot this creates a very cool highlighted effect where you see the bone of the uh, color underneath after it had dried. The Rackarth flesh, after it has that Agrath earth shade dried, uh, creates a nice transition when you bring it back up to the regular Rackarth flesh. We're using Bane Blade Brown now, and that is going to uh, highlight up even further the pouch there on his left hip. I'm really happy with the way this guy eventually is going to turn out. Um, it's a very cool and uh, I would say common standard posed model, but for, for the time that it was released, this pose of uh, one foot up on something hadn't really been invented yet. Most of the Games Workshop models were very flat and facing forward and holding the sword and shield up, but not really facing the side. So when this Crom model came out, it was very interesting to see that he's standing on on something and he's the, the momentum of the model is pushing him forward. We're using Rackarth Flesh now to highlight up the bones in his helmet, the horns on his helmet. So again we're starting from the top and we're dragging the paint down towards the center where it uh, meets the center of the helmet. What you want to do is try to start thinking of creating the uh, lines on the helmet, the natural lines that you see in a bone helmet where the grooves and the texture of the bone is uh, going to be the most interesting thing to look at. So when you're adding in the highlight colors and we're building up our highlight, um, the, the, the lighter you get, the more thinly you want to make those lines. See, again, we're starting from the top, and we're slowly creating those lines, dragging dragging it down towards the bottom, trying to leave a little bit of that shading on the underside uh, with the known oil and that Agrax Earth Shade making that really dirty shaded wash. Uh, you want to leave a little of that there, but we do want to connect the color. The highlight color has to be connected to the color underneath. So we're doing that by feathering the paint and not just slapping it on. Which is why, again, you don't want to load your brush too much. You really want to be able to work when you're going into the highlight phase. You really want to try to use as, as little amount of paint as possible because you can always add more paint. When you get to the highlighting, though, if you put too much paint on, then it is really hard to go back and clean up. You have to really take it back down to the step before, reshade it, paint it that darker color, and then melt it back up. So here you can see I'm starting to be really conscious about the lines. Even when I'm painting the under underneath area of the of the horns, I'm uh, looking to create the optical illusion of texture on the horns. Okay, continuing on, uh, I've, I'd let the paint dry for just a little while, and you always want to check when you're highlighting, check to see, okay, where, where do the colors transition, and then within that highlight, where can I paint the next highlight? It's, it's kind of like coloring in the lines when you're a little kid and you have your coloring book. Every next color, brighter color up, you want to paint within the lines of the highlight you just did. A lot of people like to um, paint a highlight color and then... Um, paint directly over it completely the next highlight color and what that does is it, it you lose your transition step and um, You want to see the gradual progression of the colors go from darker to lighter, which is why we paint thinner and thinner and thinner highlights
Okay, moving on, I'm using a P3 paint, Minoth White Highlight, and I'm mixing that into Rackart Flesh. I don't think I put this in the beginning. I don't think I included this in the color um, color menu in the beginning, but Minoth White Highlight is kind of very similar to Pallid Witch Flesh. So if you've got that, it's basically a cream-colored white, off-white cream. Uh, if you want, you could even mix... Uh, your ceramite white or your Ulthuan gray with some Rackarth flesh and get the same the same effect. The reason I have it is because I uh, purchased the Protectorate of Minoth color set from Privateer Press P3 Paints to uh, help out with my my Minoth commission. Great colors. I mean, they're they're great to work off of for you to kind of see what Privateer Press intended for their colors to be. And um, yeah, I, I I think it's a it's a good value. You, and you get a lot, so I'm I'm pretty happy with the the colors. Unfortunately, I think if you're if you want to do a proper uh, protectorate of Minoth, you're going to definitely need uh, supplementary colors. The red for the the sanguine I think is is not as red as it should be. Even the white, this um, Minoth white highlight is very very bright. So it's really the color that you add to the base rather than just using it by itself. What we're doing is we're using it just as a highlight color right now to create the very toppermost of the poppermost of these lines to create the horn texture. So this is the last highlight we're going to use on the horns and um, that's why we chose to use Minoth Base, uh, Minoth Highlight mixed in with Rackarth Flesh. We're going to take that same mixture and we're going to highlight the top and bottom edges of the cuff for the boot. And that's going to create our third level, as uh, Nick or Itigbeer likes to call it, the, the pop layer of paint for the highlight. I think that's a brilliant way of describing it. It's uh, the one that the, the eye of the, of the viewer will, will most likely see and create that real wow feeling. And again, we're using that high highlight color to paint the fangs on the necklace, as well as the very top area of the skulls hanging from a shield. Oh, you can kind of see Krom leaning forward on the base there. He's not very happy. So I'm uh, also going to use it to highlight the edge of all the hide pieces on the cloak. And again, this is the, the pop layer. This is where the eye will catch it from farther away. So you can really see the outline of the different textures on the cloak. So I'm sitting here with the lady boss. Hello. Hi there. And we're we're uh, having famous Amos cookies. Family size. Family size famous <laughs> Amos <two>. student <laughs> cookies. <laughs> yeah, or two. It's a giant box that we're pro probably gonna finish on our own. On our own, we probably shouldn't. Mm -mm. Gym. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's gonna happen. We're gonna go to the gym. One more video, and then we're gonna go to the gym. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what's your What's your favorite exercise to do at the gym, lady boss? Favorite? Ooh. Or what's one that you don't you don't hate? Um, stretching. <laughs> stretching. <laughs> Is that because you can go at your own at your own level? Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Bad. Yeah. I'm not a big cardio fan. Yeah. Cardio cardio is is tough. Unless you got more busty videos to keep it going. Hey, there you go. I don't know. No. There you go. Put some more boss tape videos on while you're on the treadmill or doing the rowing machine. Yeah, yeah. And just like play it and put 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 the screen on. Don't just play it in the background. Just put the screen on, and then anybody who's walking by will see see you <laughs> watching videos of 
little little plastic and metal monster man getting painted. Maybe you should start adding more of a club beat to your videos. Yeah, hey, maybe this music is a little too slow for people that are running on the treadmill. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Anywho. What's that one? Skrillex. Drop the bass. So there we have it. Those are those are the um, the main highlights. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use Zandri dust to highlight up the fur of the cloak. We've been watching lots of Disney movies lately. At night, <laughs> probably not the video to uh, <laughs> to talk about that, but it just came to my mind. We're watching lots of Disney movies lately. Xfinity, Netflix, The Lady Boss's own personal collection. So much to watch. <laughs> okay, so you see that I've I'm using a dry brush technique. I've got the Zandri dust on the edge of my brush. I've wiped off most of it, and now I'm trying to just hit the the textures of the, the fur. And um, I'm trying to go at mostly the same angle from left to right, top to bottom, and um, just kind of altering that, that stroke when uh, I need to get it at an area that I can't reach. But the reason for this is because you want all of the highlights to look consistent. So if somebody is holding the model from a certain angle, it looks like the, the, the highlighted areas are all kind of from the same side. We're going to do that with the, uh, up the next highlight color, which is Rackarth Flesh, of course. I think it's good to have a consistent highlight color that you add to your model. So for, for this guy, for most of my, my models, Rackarth Flesh is the color that I either uh, highlight directly especially to any brown or beige areas, or it's a color that I add to uh, the existing color to kind of lighten it up. I used to paint um, like black areas with Abaddon Black and then highlight by adding in a little bit of Rack Art Flesh. I've since found different colors and different techniques to highlight black, but in general, Rack Art Flesh is a great kind of uh, color to add when, whenever you're highlighting uh, most colors, most anything. Back to Disney movies, though. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's your favorite uh, Disney princess movie, Lady Boss? You can't ask me. That's not fair. I went through phases. So. Oh yeah. Well, let's let's say when you were a little girl, what was your uh, your favorite? Changed every other day. Mm. Let's see all the classics, I guess. Um, and then all the. The princess movies in the nineties. No mermaid. Oh yeah, that that was the uh, the resurgence, the renaissance of the the Disney movies. Yeah. Princess movies. Belle. Belle, yeah, Beauty and the Beast. Aladdin. Yeah, I always like really prefer the classics. When you say classics, you're talking about Snow White, Cinderella. Yeah. Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. Those girls. Those girls. What about you, War Boss? Oh, <laughs> definitely <laughs> Sleeping Beauty. What? <laughs> <laughs> Those fairies are hilarious. No, really. What's your, um, what's your favorite Disney honestly, princess movie? My favorite Disney princess movie would probably be, uh, I think, Beauty and the Beast. I think okay. Little, Little Mermaid is a close second, but Beauty and the Beast. I mean, I like the classics fine, but the 90s was when I started getting into the Disney movies. I don't remember really caring for them too much. I remember seeing them when I was a little kid and thinking they were fine, but... No, they're for girls. Yeah, they're for girls. And as a boy, I was like, oh, whatever. And when the new movies came out, though, I remember seeing them with my family in the theaters and thinking that they were pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know. I think the, the art style... Yeah, like like Little Mermaid was the first one, yeah. right? Um, after, after Sleeping Beauty... 
was like the first mm -hmm. oh. in 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 a long time oh. to, to like the the, the renaissance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah yeah, of, of like, I mean, like cartoons with songs and, and stuff. Okay, Brass Scorpion, you see, it, it, it's a kind of red, reddish brass color. And that's going to be the, the final highlight. You could stick with Balthazar Gold and if you wanted to. You, you, you don't have to go to Brass Scorpion. Um, I, I wanted to because I think it created an interesting contrast to the, the normal gold. And we're going to go yellow gold for the shield and the sword anyways in just a bit. So I wanted to really pull the... Uh, the gold in a, a reddish more brass direction so basically every everything on him that is gonna be his armor his helmet his uh, chest plate uh, his legs he's kind of in it looks like full plate armor right that chaos armor is that full fully enclosed suit of armor so all of that is gonna get brass scorpioned Uh, why Beauty and the Beast? I don't know. I think, I think it was it was really entertaining. I think it had more catchy songs. It had Be Our Guest and Beauty and the Beast, and I think it was the first. Wasn't it the first Disney movie that did the kind of the 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 sweeping panoramic that ballroom scene was mm -hmm. was like a new thing, right? That three D, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I remember liking Little Mermaid, just because it was it was a new Disney movie with songs in it. But um, yeah, I think I think Beauty and the Beast takes it for me. It had, it had comedy, it had good writing, it had uh, that one voice actor who would later be Judge Frollo in Hunchback. I think is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to play Little Mermaid. <laughs> you like Little Mermaid more? Yeah, I might see at the time, and I think it just it sticks with me. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember dancing to "Under the Sea" in my elementary school for May Day. <laughs> yeah, May Day is a, a Hawaiian tradition. Do you even know why they do May Day? What's the What's the story behind May Day? Oh gosh, I probably knew at some point, but it's May first, right? Yeah, May Day. In Hawaii, we celebrate May Day on May first. <laughs> terrible. We should really know. May Day is Lay Day. So it's when everybody gives each other flower garlands and throw it around each other's heads. I'm sure it has some dark history. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you see I'm I'm actually highlighting the shield with brass scorpion. Uh, later on I decide to go with the yellow gold, but um, for now I thought, well, let's just see what it looks like if if it's red. I think when you look at the model though, the yellow gold of the Vallejo rich gold is going to be much more of a striking color, especially because we're going to be adding um, lava effects to the shield in just a second. So having it bounce off of yellow instead of a reddish gold is, is more effective. I think you'll see. Lava? Lava on the shield, that's right. It's a, it's a magic lava shield. The power of chaos. All right, Runefang Steel is our top highlight for any metal. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a fine edge highlight for silver, and it's also a great way to show the edge of your armor plates. And here we're going to be using it to do a chipping effect on the shield. So I've got the Runefang Steel on the edge of my brush, and basically what I'm doing is I'm following the sculpt of the shield. It already has chips in it. So all we're doing is kind of painting very uh, random, kind of different length uh, brush strokes to show that this, this shield is getting some wear and tear because of uh, every single chip it has in it. Chip, coincidentally, also the name of Mrs. Potts' little boy in Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> You know, I really don't know if your viewers are <laughs> giving a hoot about Disney princess movies. Hey, I'm telling you, Disney princess movies, they are they are a part of our of our genetic makeup at this point. I think everybody is raised on, on Disney movies at some point. <laughs> Probably in America, I think you've seen most people have seen most Disney movies, I think. <laughs> Do they want to hear about it? 
on a video for how to paint Kron <laughs> <Kron> the Conqueror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm gonna have to put like a like a annotation or a warning at the top of the video, <laughs> like warning, yeah. Disney princess discussion halfway through this video. There Beware. Is first. I'm gonna put an article up on Bell of Lost Souls now. Do you know what Warbot's favorite Disney princess movie is? Click here and find out. <laughs> Yeah. Alan Menken, coincidentally, writer of most of the music for those Disney movies, also wrote Little Shop of Horrors, the music for that, which is one of my favorite movie musicals. Rick Moranis. Gosh, I miss that guy. <laughs> I hear he's just waiting to come back for like the right role, you know. Aren't we all? I, yeah, I know. Well... I mean, I heard he's like, most people are like, oh yeah, Rick Moranis quit acting. He doesn't act anymore. He quit. He gave it up. But he's like, no, I didn't quit. I just, I'm waiting for the right role. And then Mel, Mel Brooks said that he's, he's actually talked to him about coming back for the next Spaceballs. The quest yeah, for more money. Something. That's what it's called. The quest for more money. But yeah, he said he actually talked to Rick Moranis and he's like, Rick's in. He's is on that board. In production? Is that a sure thing? I don't think it's a sure thing. I think they were still talking about it, but he was bragging saying that, you know, I've, we don't have John Candy anymore, but I've got like, I've got all these people from the the original movie, and and I want to make more money. I hope, I hope they do it. That'd be great. Yeah, cause I oh man, I would hate to see them reboot that. They're rebooting everything now, old franchises and movies and properties and stuff. Yeah, there's not a lot of new material that I've seen, or there is, but it's just is there not an interest? I don't know. Uh, I think Spaceballs was like a cultural thing that like Star Wars was so big at the time, which is why it's probably Mel, Mel Brooks is coming out and saying he's going to do it again because of the new Star Wars coming out. Makes sense. So Runefang Steel, where um, I'm using it, you can see to paint the, the tips of the horns there. And uh, again, you don't want to paint the entire area. I'm kind of choosing... Uh, choosing an area and the way I'm doing it is I'm looking at my model and thinking okay if I was somebody who just came up to the table and said that looks awesome can I pick it up and look at it and then they picked it up what what is the angle they're most likely to hold the model from and then that is where I try to paint the highlights to reflect that if you do the entire horn cap then you're um, going to cr create a very flat surface that doesn't uh, show off any depth or uh, highlighting so Vallejo Liquid Gold series, one of the best. In fact, I think it's the best way to paint metallics. If you're going to use it, though, don't um, seal your model with Purity Seal from Games Workshop after. Or you're going to have to go back over it because Purity Seal just gunks up your colors if, if you're using metallic paint. Something about the, the metal pigment in the metallic paints, especially enamel paints like Vallejo's Liquid Gold. Uh, Purity Seal is great to seal your models, keep it from chipping. And um, in my old metal models, I can't tell you how many times, especially guys with fur cloaks that have that texture, you pick it up to move it around on the battlefield. And uh, when you put it down, all of a sudden, all this fur on the back of the cloak is that pewter. Like you, your finger rubbed off all the paint. So protect your models, varnish your models, seal them. Um, but maybe, maybe not purity seal from Games Workshop. Testers dull coat and gloss coat are great. Also, uh, I, I found great success with them. Gloss coat, uh, unfortunately, leaves a very, a very shiny, glossy, hard, like candy finish, which kind of takes away from the realism. But if you spray it with gloss coat, that's the uh, best way to seal it. Um, I think it's the best protection, and then dull it down with the dull coat, which is also a varnish, but people use it more to dull down the shine from the gloss coat. And that's basically your Varnish 101 from Warboss Tay. There's a lot of other tactics out there for using the right varnish, picking the right varnish for you, but that's the uh, simplest one. The Lady Boss and I have had some bad experiences with Games Workshop's Purity Seal. <laughs> what? Why do they name it Purity Seal? 
<laughs> oh, because you know, Space Marines have like wax, red wax with parchment hanging down.、Mm-hmm. Their Games Workshop is all about branding. So Purity Seal is basically the, the their label for those things that Space Marines wear, and they have like、uh, prayers and blessings and all this stuff written on it. So sounds like a line of chastity belts. <laughs> Purity seal, <laughs> fathers. If you don't want your daughters doing the hanky panky, get them a purity seal belt. Okay, so this is where I've decided. Okay, we're gonna use this yellow gold to paint up the the、um, the symbol on the shield as well as the pommel of the sword. And I think this is the best way to do it because. I'm I'm really all about like the balance of colors and creating、um, like the the aesthetic of how your colors sit on a miniature. So when you look at your model at the end, you're going to see a lot of brass and a lot of gold, but your eye is going to be drawn to the two. It's going to look like a triangle with the two,、uh, the shield and the pommel in yellow gold at the bottom, and then the top of the triangle is Crom's helmet, which is going to be in brass. So. Uh, if you think of it like that,、uh, one thing that I that took me a long time to learn was how to、um, kind of create a, a visual image of what you want your model to look like. I used to just slap colors on models and think, "Oh, I like purple, so I'll paint this orc's armor purple." And oh, orange! This orange is a cool color. I'll paint his pants orange. And you guys come out looking like really weird. But if you if you think about your colors, gold and brass are so close together on the color wheel. The gold is a little bit more yellow though, and the brass is more red. So it's a small, subtle thing, but it it creates a more interesting finished picture. I was recording the voiceover for the other video, and Duki was outside barking at our neighbor's cat. <laughs> he just did it like once or twice, and then he came back in. <laughs> Protector of the house, the mighty Duke. <laughs> okay, so now we're painting the lava effect on the shield. So we're doing this by first taking some corn red and watering it down, and then painting it. Right where the black of the shield meets the gold design of the Chaos Star. The reason we water it down is because if you don't water it down, it's going to be so thick that it creates a very obvious color break. If you thin down your red, it's going to kind of、uh, spread, and、uh, it, the the pigment of the black underneath is going to blend into it a little bit more, and it's going to create more of a blend. So it looks like there's a glow coming out from underneath the shield. Rather than a very obvious color change. Oh, that dog! So again, like I said in the first video,、uh, if you mess up or you put too much paint down, you can see there's a lot of red right there on that、uh, corner. Then it's very simple to just go back with Abaddon Black, which is the base color, and just tidy it up. Especially if you thin your corn red paint down, there's no obvious break in the color. It's going to be a lot more thin, and it's going to be really、uh, simple, a very very easy thing to just go back in and、um, clean that up and make the make the red as tight as you want it to be. So、um, I think I'm gonna do a little bit more red up at the top, yeah. So you want to be careful. the The great thing about having a cork、um, handle for your models, a cork mount with a blue tack to stick your models to, is that you don't always have to paint from the same angle. You could have You could turn your model upside down, paint from a different angle. The reason I mention that is because the bottom part of the chaos symbol is very easy to paint from、uh, if you're painting right in front like I am. But the top part, because it has the chain and those skulls, it would be very easy to 
um, mess up and get some paint onto either of those surfaces. So you can flip your model around, turn it upside down, and um, unless it's a metal model like this one is, and, and it's very uncooperative, usually plastic or resin models, or if you secure your metal model well enough, it won't move and it'll be fine. Then you'll find that it really frees you up as, as the painter, as the artist, to not be contorting your hands into weird uh, positions to just to get the brush where you want it to go. You could turn your model upside down, flat, um, standing straight up, wh whatever you need to get to the part that you need to paint. And you can see I cleaned up the inside of the lava there with, with Abaddon Black. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking Troll Slayer Orange and we're going to create the uh, red hot part of the lava that's coming through, that magma effect. And uh, to do that, we're just basically painting within the red, but we're picking and choosing spots to uh, have that red hot uh, magma bursting through. We don't want to do the whole entire shield, uh, but we, we, we do want to go inside of the red without covering the red completely. One of, the, one of the good things about the End Times books is that it brings a lot of closure to the, the whole Warhammer world since they're porting everything over to Age of Sigmar. They're killing off everybody, that, all the special characters that existed in the Warhammer fantasy world. And uh, Krom is mentioned just once in the Nagash book. And uh, spoilers, if you don't want to hear what happens to Krom, then uh, turn, your, turn your sound down for the next five seconds. Okay, ready? Okay, turn your sound down and count to five. He dies. All right, welcome back, everybody who turned your sound down. <laughs> that's <pretty> ghetto. <laughs> hey, that's, uh, that's how you do spoilers. Don't you watch like YouTube shows and stuff? Um, just swore by Steve. Yeah. <clears throat> Pays me. That's right. In smoochies, he 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 he. What? So you can see the magma effect if we paint it in the red, even at the top. Uh, we don't want to cover the entire red surface area. We want it to look like it goes orange closest to the chaos symbol, then red, and then black as it as it uh, cools off. And again, we're going back in with the black because we want to clean up any of the areas of paint that kind of spilled out into areas that we don't want it to. You can see there's there's probably too much paint on the tip of my brush. I could have probably thinned it down a little bit more. And you can also see because of the yellow of the uh, gold on the shield, and the yellow of the gold on the pommel of the sword, it uh, creates that balance between the two gold pieces of the model and then the brass armor. I think that's a really good effect, and um, I like that Games Workshop kind of did it like that as well. Basically now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of cleaning up the areas, and I notice that, oh, I, I want to put a little bit more red in, there's too much orange, or uh, I, I painted too much black and cleaned up the, the outline a little bit too much. You might have also noticed that I put a little bit of paint on my thumb there. That's not something I, I generally recommend. If you have a napkin or something nearby, you can use that. Uh, it's a bad habit of mine that sometimes I'll take the paint off of the wet palette and have a little bit too much on my brush, and I'll just wipe a little bit off because um, I'd rather get the paint on myself than slap it on the model, and then all of a sudden it ruins the work that I have did before. As we're uh, moving on to finishing our crom here, I'm just going to be going back in now and doing the last final details. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm taking my rack hearth flesh and I'm painting the, uh, the wrap of cl cloth around the helmet. I'm then taking Castellan Green and I'm painting back up and highlighting back up the shaded green areas right there
You'll notice also that the Balthazar gold that we painted onto the helmet of the Night Panther uh, as we move on to Minoth white highlight for the, the, the wrap, um, when we shaded it with known oil, it dulled down to a very dark bronze. And uh, I think that's great because now you've got three different gold colors on, on this model. You've got the Night Panther helmet top, which looks absolutely nothing like the brass armor which looks absolutely nothing like the gold weapon and um, shield that Krom is equipped with. If the Night Panther helmet was painted with Brass Scorpion and looked just like Krom, then it would create a very visual uh, discrepancy. You'd look at it and you'd be like, why, why, is, why is the helmet of the good guy the exact same color as this bad guy's armor? Also, if, if we went with the yellow gold, um, you'd ask the same thing or you'd think maybe the Night Panther was using this sword and shield and all of a sudden uh, he's not anymore. I always found it funny that this this model doesn't even have a head in the helmet. It's just an empty helmet that he's standing on like he's kicking a can around down the street. In the last phases of this model now, we're, we're getting to the finish line. We're taking Dark Reaper and we're painting the boot. Das Boot. And we're kind of just finding the highlight colors and um, Dark Reaper is such a great color if you want a very uh, latex shiny looking surface material. So um, I definitely highly recommend it. You could also go with gray if you want but I decided to go with Dark Reaper because it was, um, I, I felt it brought a nice balance of colors so there's not so much reds and beiges and, and yellows but uh, you also get this cool blue color right on the boot. And finally rust gray to highlight up the boot a little bit more. Again we're tracing within the lines so wiping off a little bit of excess there, I'm finding where the light hits the boot the most and I'm trying to recreate that uh, effect of lighting by painting with a very short feathered brush stroke those areas where there's the most bend in the cloth and the ones that are closest to the light source. So I'm doing that for both boots. <laughs> I think Duke rolled his ball under. Duke has a habit of rolling his ball under things and then growling and trying to get them. All right, so here we're at the end of the model. You can see how he looks. He's ready to be put on his resin scenic base. I'm very, very happy with it. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is just wash down the boot with known oil. It's a little bit a little bit bright. The, the rust gray is a little too highlighted for me, so that's all I'm doing. But thanks for watching. If you guys are interested in following me elsewhere and you've never seen any of my work before, you can find my Facebook at Warboss Tay. You can also find me on Twitter at Warboss Tay. And if you'd like to commission me to paint something up for you, then you can reach me at my website, warbosstaystudios.com, or email me at warbosstaystudios at gmail.com. That's warbosstaystudios, all one word, at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. It's a long video, but it's a great, uh, great model to have and to paint, and I hope you enjoyed it. Ladies players! Ha <laughs> ha!